So what brings us here, right? This is the, <laughs> with the change thing. <laughs> What brings us here? I think we, we, we all have a, um, some connecting questions, right? Yeah. That, um, how, how do we create a, a world or a society that nurtures us to become better humans and to, to grow our humanity rather than a society that's focused on financial growth? Right. And what does such a world look like? Yeah. What is it like to live in, in such a place? Yeah. How we met, I think this is all... Um first of all while we're sitting here and uh, in the run of the last year uh, being part of these different groups and camps who are trying out how to live this other world I realized just you know that there's a huge separation we're experiencing today in our daily life in our urban life actually and being part of this other group I just thought this is not there there need to be the change towards this more community living globally connected uh, exchange of information and uh, um, living more compassion, more empathy and um, yeah, and also to re-understand what makes us human and how can technology help us for that. What if we could create a world in which we live in compassion and live with uh, support system around us, an ecosystem that helps us become better human beings to unfold our potentials to live the way we want to live and um, so what if we what if we just start building these ecosystems i think you know from my perspective it was pretty clear when for me a moment of change uh, happened and uh, this was a year ago. i mean i worked as a as a consultant for a long time always corporates industry digital media, all that stuff. So living a, a, a kind of a corporate life, but just, you know, as a satellite in the end. And uh, working for there for in this in this position for 10 years, actually, you know, there's this moment when you think this is not working. This is a system which is where the outcome is not helping anyone, just a few. And this becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And I'm really I'm someone, you know, I believe in technology and stuff, but then one thing happens after the other and you kind of become a little bit, you know, um, think that things get out of hand. And this was last year when I then said, okay, get not driven by money or by all these narratives that people told you in the end. And, um, and this is what I'm doing actually at the moment. Like if, and it's interesting what kind of uh, project out then suddenly comes towards you because you just you know changed the path in a way. So you're looking for new narratives, looking to find new narratives. Right, right, and and uh, in the end, uh, as we just said, you know, it, it starts with yourself, and it's you are the 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 ultimate experiment in the end. Uh, so you, of course, can say, you know, yeah, the society needs to change, the structures needs to change. But in, in the end, uh, you mm -hmm. have to understand what is, what, what, uh, is the, the deeper underlying nature of yourself and then change yourself and change your surrounding and bring people together and whatever. And live the way you want to live and like it's healthy. Mm -hmm. This is where what I think. Yeah. And was there like some flashpoint, or was this like a building frustration that, that led to this? A building frustration, yes. I would, I would say so <laughs> constantly. There was no way out. You know, you know this moment when there's just you know there's just saying okay, stop, pause button, mm. out of here. No, uh, not another project, or you know the project needs to change now, uh, and. Uh, and I think, you know, this is also this, this uh, when you just, you know, surrounded with the refugee crisis, with financial crisis, everything, everywhere, I think, so wait a second, this kind of structure doesn't, doesn't uh, start working. It, it really comes to its borders at the moment in, in a very big scale, in a global scale, actually. And, um, and um, yeah, and I think this is also this context where I work with, uh, with uh, Alexa and Pedro and stuff, you know, with people on it, on this topic of neotribes and um, where people understand to more go back to the community life. But definitely, you know, building on this postmodern world, what we learned so far and, and use this technology, but more for uh, uh, putting the community in the center 
and um, and this is where I'm uh, theoretically, practic practically, kind of work on at the moment. Yeah. And yeah, Anas, you kind of connect to this this I idea. Connect to the inner um, desire to um, change the the world around me because I've been traveling a lot for the past 10 years. I've lived in, I don't know, 10 different countries and been exposed to many different levels of society. And yes, I did always see something's going wrong there. Um, but I also saw that beautiful creative things are actually happening in that visited many places around the world or lived in beautiful places around the world where actually community is taking place, where there are um, yeah, settings where an infrastructure allows you to be who you want to be, um, to act, first of all feed yourself, to be warm inside, mm -hmm. to be able to know where the food comes from because it was grown right outside of your door. Mm -hmm. And um, also it allowed for creative fulfillment because mm. you were, I was free to actually explore um, a lot of different fields and art and literature and music. Um, and most of all, um, I, I started to look at how people organize themselves and what is actually the experience of creating value together. Mm. Um, so when I came to Berlin six years ago, I was a young father and I was pretty well highly educated <laughs> uh, looking at the world and these endless opportunities out there and I found some, also in an urban environment, I found settings and communities or maybe just the seeds of communities that allowed for a bigger transformation in the in at least the society around me. So I see um, for myself, I'm coming more from an opportunity perspective rather than the um, the the perspective of a of a problem or of a negative situation. And I'm personally driven more by a positive. Um, impulses and inspiration around me. So it's more that you've encountered um, things that have inspired you and shown you that there is there is an alternative and that inspired you and motivated you to towards that um, exactly towards that direction. I think this is an interesting like it's <laughs> interesting like to just observe these like already like what are the what are the motivations for, for, for doing things like on one hand you, you have like to be inspired and then the other you have to be um, frustrated, and um, I think I probably sit somewhere in in, in between the two mm. um, because I ran, I was running a business in in Sheffield for I think about seven years. So I went down the I went down the control paradigm route, and I, I had patents on my ideas, and I was producing in China, selling in America, and all over the world. And I realised that by being the point of control, I made myself the bottleneck also. And everything that I was holding together was also my, my prison. And as soon as I, I let go of that, I was in a situation where what, was, what appeared to be the worst thing, bankrupting my business, was actually the best thing because I'd freed myself from everything else. I was able to you know, go and do a snowboarding sabbatical um, for six months managing chalets in the mm. French Alps and I was really able to look at where do I want to go and I wanted to go to a point where um, I could bring ideas into the world without control and to ask this question how do we actually move beyond um, trying to control everything trying to manage everything because what we control controls us yeah. and, and how do we get to this stage where instead um, ideation and the creation of ideas is a is a state of flow and mm -hmm. that I am an agent of that flow to help bring things into the world but without the the anxiety um, without the need to um, be compensated for it even to just kind of trust that if I put stuff out there then 
what I need, what I need will come to me. Yeah. What was it actually that frustrated you in your job and the world around you? What kind of like, what were those points that were really? I think you know when uh, when we were yesterday seating on the field, and uh, I think it's the best metaphor you know for the creation process, and it also goes into your question, mm -hmm. um, uh, because um, yeah, we were putting the seeds in the ground. And, and, and I thought, wow, it's actually fascinating, you know, this is how nature runs, you know. You put a seed in the ground and then, this was the saying, get the fuck out of the way, nature will do it. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that this um, big uh, system, this industry system, these huge corporations, everything is defi defined, everything is regulated, they're always talking about the processes, which makes everything super unnatural. And I mm -hmm. of, often just said to myself when we started a project you know uh, you go into the ideation phase and then you say well this this idea is so amazing and then you get into these processes of these uh, corporations and or also you know the regulate regulation around it uh, also you know the nation state you're whatever you know legal stuff um, and then you just fight all these rules and I was always thinking get the just get the fuck out of my way I think this was a little bit the frustration and I was more and more thinking what are the natural processes in the end, you know, mm -hmm. how people can be together and I mean nature is running it, you know, something extremely beautiful comes out of it. You might even, you know, and you can eat it and whatever and it nurtures you. And, um, and I think, yeah, to a little bit, you know, also listen to the natural way of how to manage stuff. And not even, you know, uh, yeah, trying to rule everything. Because you know what the, what the goals are. The goals are, you know, even if everyone is talking about we're doing design, you know, design, user, user centered design or whatever, then you're sitting in these workshops and then suddenly, yo, yeah, well, actually, you know, we have to raise our revenue and la 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 la. And then all the ideas are flowing around that and, and it's not about the user in the end. It's not about, Uh, or you know, I also I'm, I'm also uh, I hate these these terms already that there are users and there are corporations and stuff. It's the separation, and it's you are already you know you need to use it. You need mm -hmm. to use your own shit in the end. And uh, so, want to say uh, there is a lot of wrong thinking in the system, and which is not considering the natural way of how things go, in the end. And um, and um, and it's hard, you know, to say, you know, why why is it? It's history. We talked about fear, you know, and uh, tons of traumas, which is you know kind of happen already, and people just projecting it into the future and want to build <coughs> secure systems. And um, but I think there is a huge need, you know, that people start talking with each other. Uh, 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 and trust each other and I think this is and this is super hard at the same time because a lot of things happened already and and to building up this trust between people then it's just and, and just let things go sometimes and come on, I'm German you know so I definitely I'm also sometimes overstructured and stuff compared to others and uh, I realized it's also in my DNA but um, it's um, yeah I think um There need to be more positive experiences, you know, to, that, to show people that it's possible, you know, when there are some, some rules. Because also when I was at the camp at Park 21... Do you want to explain what that is a little bit? Yeah. So this was this um, hacker camp last year uh, in August and September, uh, where uh, 12 projects meet. It was kind of an accelerator. Uh, a camp for sustainable hardware products which were open source and it was uh, a kind of an, uh, a political message towards the UN climate summit which called the COP21 and it called POC21 so there was the relation and it says uh, while you are talking we are doing and um, in this camp it was not just you know that people just went there and, wa and worked It was uh, also about that these people also lived together at a beautiful, nice chateau close to Paris called the Chateau de Meumont. And uh, so there was a community life also set up. And it was clear that it's not a hotel. 
and it was clear that there are going to be situations are coming up which were you know not expected and problems need, which need to be fixed in the end and uh, and so um, it was and there was of course tools and stuff and um, and uh, this was the message right from the beginning so if you see a problem fix it you have two hands brain great people around you so just do it and I would in and um, what I experienced there actually was this moment you know you set some rules and then actually you know, these miracle moments are happening suddenly that you're just thinking when every but it's really this this consciousness in the sense everyone is giving in because maybe it's a pressure of time or whatever but it's really when you create a situation when everyone is just giving in and contributing constantly then i have the feeling you know being there that nothing actually can go wrong mm -hmm. and uh but Today it's exactly the opposite in what I see in the end, or everyone wants to take Why out. Why do you see that? In, 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 in how our you know, economic society. system is, is designed, is everyone needs to, uh, people are getting rewarded who are putting a lot of money aside and rewarding with them with big houses and you know, just uh, uh, or washing money somewhere. Uh, you know, however they earned it, and I think you know it's it's a little bit uh, the value system is a little bit broken. I have the feeling. So it's more about what 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 happens when you experience a space of trust and a, a space where you're right. actually enabled, and right. a space where you're given responsibility, you're given the opportunity, and you're given the chance to to make something happen yeah. and, uh, and 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 create something, and. Um, yeah, I think this is this has really been a, a critical part of my own experience with letting go of control. Um, I've organised festivals in less than three weeks with more than sixty people, and we didn't plan those festivals. We just have meeting like two uh, planning parties. So the first planning party was so everybody could get to know one another and talk about what they wanted to do mm. and what they needed to make it happen. And then the second planning party was just a story of what they were going to do at the event so everybody knew what each other's roles and responsibilities yeah. were and they could then make it happen together. And this, is, this is, was always, for me, a, a terrifying experience and wonderful at the same time mm -hmm. because I, I was having to hold off the people at the back who are um, you know, putting in a little bit of money or whatever and they're terrified <coughs> yeah. of what's going to happen. They don't know what's going to happen and I'm there going, they're going, can you show us the plan? Can you tell us what's going to happen on the day? And I'd have yeah. to say, no, I can't. I can't set your expectations at all. I have no idea. I have only hints yeah. of what will come out of this. And, and yet always we would have these beautiful workshops, these beautiful occurrences um, coming through. Uh, we, we had entire infrastructures built for 250 square meters mm -hmm. of space for less than a thousand euros, um, you know, even a, a three meter high tower, yeah. a kitchen, a gallery space, and all of these different things. And I was in Las Vegas on a different project when this mm. was happening. I just let go completely. And it organized itself. It, it organized itself, yeah. It's just that people, they, they, they know each other, they communicate with one another, they have access to the resource, but above all, that they take responsibility for their own actions and they identify why they want to do it, like yeah. what the benefit is for them to act on doing that thing, on mm. making that thing happen. Mm -hmm. And and then they act through through passion. Mm -hmm. And not everybody will show up and do it. Mm. You know, there, there's always some people that drop out, but then there were always people that would show up last minute and mm -hmm. not even come to the meetings and just feel that they had the permission to engage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then it builds as well. People see people doing things and they want to get involved and they, they build on it and they build on it and they build again. And you can, you can really, when you, when you get into this letting go, beautiful things occur. Um, I even did this with my wedding. It was a you know, it was, we, we had a four-day event on, on an island in Aswan yeah. where people came and they did things for the island. They created a map of the village at the entrance to the island. Mm -hmm. They built Wi-Fi internet connections for the space that we were at from yeah. um, tin cans and, um, and the existing uh, network capacity. Yeah. And they, they, they made up our wedding on the spot. And it was the most 
beautiful ceremony and we didn't know until we got to the West Bank what it was going to be. Amazing. And there's, there's, there's something about that release, that surrender, um, that you make yourself vulnerable, that you create that position of vulnerability and that allows everybody to support one another, that you're no longer in control of them, but you're, you're working together mm -hmm. and that everybody is responsible for making it success. Yeah. And from the from the first of these events was actually where Open Design City came from, which yeah. was a, a more that permanent. Run? What's that? How did that run? That was a more permanent that, workspace yeah, yeah. for, and this is where I know um, Johannes from. Um, this was a more permanent workspace that came from the the community, and it was. I think this is the other thing to recognise about the letting go of control. Um, and maybe to connect with Poc, yeah. this was inspired from the, the first um, event that those guys did called Paloma 5, which yeah. was a six-week residency where we were living and working together in the same space mm -hmm. and that we were able to invent our own structures for working together to explore how we wanted to live together, how we wanted to work together and what we could do together. And on leaving, we wanted this permanent workshop space where people could come and be free to mm. make and share and build and create, mm. um, that there would just be this energy around the space. Mm -hmm. But we didn't, um, we didn't actually do anything to create that space. We started making bioplastic um, from cornstarch. We started just experimenting. Yeah. Um, with making lampshades, yeah. you know, it had no relevance to this space <laughs> at all. But from that action, we got asked to do a workshop. From that first workshop, we then got invited to um, facilitate the yeah. first Maker Lab event. And then from the first Maker Lab event, before the event had even taken place, Beta House got in touch with us and said, "We want to make this a permanent workshop." Yeah. Um, and after an hour meeting, uh, Christoph. Um, from Beta House said yeah. you move in and uh, move in at the start of April. So the natural process. So it was yeah, you know, it's complete flow. No no planning. Yeah. No nothing. It was just our intention um, mm -hmm. was 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 known. And you can put whatever context you want. But for me, it really taught me that you know the 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 the, the amount that you let go. It, it will flow in the direction if you know where you want to get to, you know what you want to achieve, mm -hmm. then anything is really possible. But mm -hmm. you need to know concretely, you need to will it, um, yeah. and you need to be paying attention to it. But you yeah. don't need to be like squeezing it tight or planning it or holding it. Yeah. And from the, from the first days, we just said to people, this to pick up on your narrative thing, yeah. this is a space where you share what do you want to share here? Mm -hmm. um, this is a space where you can um, come and share your tools. This is a space where you can set up um, your own communities. You can share knowledge. You can share your ideas. You yeah. can build whatever you like. What do you want to build here? And again, it's just creating the, the permission, the, the opportunity, and the, the, the trust in other people that they can come and, and, and do something and just to trust that they will act positively yeah. on that impetus and the community grew like crazy and I think you know that this uh, basic seed in the end you know the message of, of, of uh, everything every venture you're starting is extremely important and if it's in this case you know trust and creativity mm. then it's just it's just designs in the end you know mm. the nature of what is happening then in this space because I thought you, it was interesting when we talked before, you know, I, I think they changed the concept and then suddenly also, you know, the whole creativity kind of imploded. Mm. Yeah, I would like to pick up on that because yes. I did not only meet Jay at Open Design City in Berlin, but at the same time I was enrolled in the School of Design Thinking yeah. in Potsdam, which was sister school of Stanford, D school, where we were trained in how to actually work in autonomous teams that are assembled uh, with people from all different backgrounds. We were always given a design challenge and mm. you could actually feel that tension of creativity in, in the space uh, twice a week officially, but in the end it turned out to be five days a week where brilliant people from all different mm. backgrounds come together to actually solve that challenge in a creative way. And during that time we we found, first of all, we found out okay, there's, there's a need for change, yes, what we touched already, 
but there are also these beautiful examples of this is how we could actually um, take me me measures into our own hands and and become actors of change mm -hmm. and um, applying and living in Berlin at that time that was quite a while ago um, I discovered other places like the school which were more self-organized self-governed um, maybe a little bit more chaotic but also um, very inspiring mm -hmm. and at Beta House at Open Design City um, that was kind of like a seed produ producing mother plant of many projects that came out of it or many groups and sub-communities that started spreading all over the city and all over the world in the end um, and something that united us and still does was that um, desire to have a safe space where we can actually explore who we want to be and explore the things that we want to do and contribute to the world and so um, a little later we we were a pretty big group already um, we needed a space um, again to to cultivate that culture of mm. co-working, co-living. And Beta House already existed and it had a certain structure and, you know, it, I, I never had a problem with that structure, but we were a lot of people. We were about 50 people already. So how it felt a little bit like invading that space that already existed. So what we did uh, instead was we went out and went to Neukölln, which is a maybe more working class area of <coughs> Neukölln, with a lot of um, empty spaces, empty lots. And we rented a former butchery, mm -hmm. which um, became the home or our home of, um, of people who continuously want to work in an interdisciplinary way and actually live off that. Um, so we, we, from the start, wanted to take it to another level from, from a mere prototype of this could be a reality that we want to live and to, uh, okay, this is a reality that we live in. And um, over the years, um, these, these principles of autonomy, action-oriented mindset and, uh, and, a, and trust really were the, the factors that held us together, that also helped us grow, that attracted a lot of people, that inspired a lot of people to a point where um, nowadays, um, these formats that we explored and discovered and changed and prototyped and tested and iterated, uh, we turned into into work experience that we package and we can facilitate and help others again to explore themselves and to um, build these safe spaces around the world for organizations of all levels, mm -hmm. of NGOs, very grassroots level to um, government organizations and corporations where this change that we all talk about also is taking place and that desire is also natural because in the end they're also people you know those are normal people <coughs> peters and marie's and <laughs> you know they want to yeah. they want to live a satisfied life where yeah. they actually um, see a sense in what they're doing with their time and I think it's it's very exciting at the moment, you know, that everyone is also, or a lot of uh, corporations, companies, startups, um, talking more and more about a kind of a purpose they want to bring into the world. And it's, um, I mean, I hope that there is a shift, and that they are, that we also come up, you know, with with kind of new metrics uh, for for corporations and with new methods. And I think these kind of methods are a very important step in this direction to to kind of define people as whole or you know mm -hmm. also in in their creativity and in their ideas and you know and everything what comes out there and maybe this is then the first kind of a push you know in a in a in a more yeah holistic understanding mm -hmm. of a corporation the question is always also um, how do we sustain these community efforts because ODC financially wasn't sustainable. Mm -hmm. It didn't. It didn't. You know, hold, wasn't a, able to hold its own weight. Yeah, yeah. Because there was an infrastructure that needed to be paid for, mm -hmm. and there were tools that needed to be, I don't know, maintained or replaced or bought. 
And also because of that situation that we are still living in, in that transition phase, we do live in apartments yeah. that we pay rent for, we pay our bills, we, you know, we want public transport, we yeah. want our cell phones, we want to go on holidays, all these things that actually uh, demand also a financial concept behind it. So mm -hmm. I think that is where um, I try to connect different worlds um, and I, um, I see the potential here of you now we could maybe also explore that from different perspectives of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. so entrepreneurship means for me um, to bring something on from one state of being to another state of being. So it's a desired state of being that you carry something towards and you actually fill the gap in between with your creativity, yeah. with resources, with your network, with with your yeah. ideas yeah. and you make your ideas become reality, a new reality that wasn't there before. So for us, going also back to that question of how can we build ecosystems that actually nurture us to become mm -hmm. full human beings that are healthy, happy and maybe not poor, yeah. where we can actually sustain ourselves. Yeah. Um, I think entrepreneurship plays a really big role in yeah. that as well. Yeah. I, I think it. I think it does, and the, the, the not poor um, element also. I think is, 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 is also requires consideration of what we consider um, wealth to be, and I think this ties into what you were talking about with metrics. So, mm -hmm. when we look at wealth at the moment, finance is a, is really an intermediary for the resources that that we require. It's something that we we need at the moment in order to pay for the rent because we don't own the land, for example. Um, or we need to pay for the, the health insurance because that's the we're legally obliged to and that's the only means by which we can presently get the care that we need. But each of these these resources, these, these things, access to shelter, access to food, access to water, um, access to that which makes us healthy as well as that which we require to grow our intellect, our ideas, our knowledge, these are all different forms of wealth and different forms of resource flow that, that, that finance presently actually um, gets in the way of in a, in a lot of respects uh, because we use it as a, as a proxy um, for engaging in these things directly. And rather than um, if I have to get something from another human and I recognize them as a, as, a, as a human, then it's very different to the transaction that I make at the moment where I, I go into a bakery and I don't even need to look the baker in the eye, I don't even need to um, recognize yeah. their humanity, recognize their contribution. It's like, here's, your, here's the value of your contribution, it's in this, 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 this coin. And it's, it, it doesn't give the other things that we that we need. It doesn't give us respect, it doesn't give us recognition, mm -hmm. it doesn't give us a, a sense of trust and value and community. So that which was maybe intended as a social lubricant um, has actually become something that instead disconnects us from the, the other things that we actually require because we don't value them. And um, I think what, what you're doing with Journey to Creation is interesting, for example, that you have a a foot in both spaces, mm -hmm. you know, that on one hand you can meet with, um, meet with businesses and, and, and talk with businesses and generate financial value. And generating financial value then gives us a resource that we can use to invest in our own land, to invest in um, our own supply structures for these resources that could potentially then allow us to remove finance from the mix. And I think this is the the, the kind of core requirement of the thinking is how do we shift from um, a finance focused and, and financial growth focused model to a humanity growth focused model. I rather would add, or I would add to how do we connect the different models <coughs> where mm. they actually make yeah. sense yeah. until a point maybe where we yeah. build an alternative yeah. reality or uh, solutions of direct yeah. Um, access to fresh water that comes from the right. sky, we collect it on our mm. ceilings, yeah. filter it, drink it. Yeah. We grow our own food inside or outside on the field, uh, go out there, pick it and eat it. We don't have to go to the store and use that proxy of money mm. anymore. Mm -hmm. The same with transport, open yeah. source um, possibilities of building transport systems, maybe like the Hyperloop that right. is um, crowdsourced actually of 
an idea that, that is so expensive and so far out, but maybe together in a collective society we have the intelligence and the, the potential of the resources to actually make something like that happen, where you can go from New York to LA in three hours. Mm. And we, we're using more than just that proxy of money that comes from one place and put it in there. Yeah, I think the Hyperloop is a <sighs> super interesting uh, example. And I think it also uh, uh, shows this, this, you know, this underlying narrative in the end, because all, this, all these examples that you just brought up, you know, these business models, they are all designed on the, on the philosophy of scarcity. Mm -hmm. That everything, you know, that you have to kind of force others to join you and stuff. And Hyperloop, I mean, they just come up with an idea. This idea was not even new. Tec technology, it's, it's, you know, it's doable since years. But they're just, you know, using the, the, the current tools in the end, you know, to crowdsource uh, uh, information to uh, the art tools now, you know, to contribute and also they come also this topic with ownership so that everyone gets a share in it. So I think this is also becoming a bigger topic and and voila, you know, mm. and you have uh, and this thing is rolling in the end and this thing is going to happen yeah. and, and I think this is a beautiful example then suddenly if there's kind of, you know, if you come up with the ideal organization structures suddenly everything is on it and then you build an infrastructure which lasts which everyone can use and uh, and then you know then we are yeah i think this is also kind of you know my my wish future scenario that we are we are uh, using technology to kind of you know uh, 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 yeah just you know um, run logistics energy um, and communication. communication. This is, I think, the main the main uh, uh, pillows we have to manage uh, to really build an infrastructure which everyone can use and everyone mm. can and just you know uh, 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 yeah jump on it and um, and then we can easily switch from this scarcity yeah. idea to this abundance idea in the end. Mm. And uh, I think that then money will. Uh, not be the center of many ideas which are popping out then from from then on. I totally know? agree with that because I um, experienced that firsthand when I was living in Taos, New Mexico right. during the time when I went to Earthship Academy. Yeah. We um, first of all we learned to build structures, homes that totally sustain yourself 100% that are off grid, that are made from recycled material. Yeah. And the most beautiful part was that they were built by a collective effort of a group of people, of international people who come together with a shared purpose to build a structure for, for themselves or for somebody else for, for a purpose. Um, and the other part was that we were able to live in these homes and experience it firsthand. So I'm standing out there in the mountains and it's snowing outside, I'm wearing a t-shirt, the lights are on, the music is playing, um, something is cooking in the, in the kitchen. And nice. all was everything was so direct and <clears throat> and real yeah. and natural and not this like hippie esque uh, dream state of the seventies, but we were living in twenty twelve. You know, everything was actually um, yeah pretty modern. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I also see this reality in the in the near future. We've seen it already in Germany. The first offshore was built now, officially. Um, now it's the it's the time for us to yes invest into land and get our hands onto land and start building more of these structures for ourselves and for others a to learn how to build them to replicate them in other places mm. and also maybe if you if you can't do it right now but you can see an alternative you can see the light you can see an inspiration of a of a different reality that is possible yeah yeah, I think that's definitely the, 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 the driving force or one of the driving forces for me is on, on, on one hand I want to build I want to build the future that I want to live in and um, I'm, you know there's, there's, there's both a combination of desire and frustration. So I, I, I want to build this thing to experience it for myself. I want to build a, a, a house which is beneficial. Um, for both myself as a human being and for my family, but also for humanity, but also something that can be replicated and, uh, and duplicated and copied. And to, to create this opportunity for people to look at something, look at a home and say, I want to live like that. Mm -hmm. I want to live in that, um, I want to live in that community. I want to live that lifestyle. 
and that is accessible to me. That is something that can um, that I can have. Mm. Either I can buy it, or I can build it, and I can I can make it myself. Mm. And um, at the, the the core of the project I'm building, it's it, it's a changing thing. It's something that you build room by room. Um, that you start with the bedroom. You start with looking at one element, like and how do we adapt the the principles of the of the airship and bring them into um, into a system which can be uh, lightweight and nomadic and can move from place to place because then that allows uh, for different people that are in different locations to experience it without having to travel um, to the location where where it already is placed but also the the nomadism creates this opportunity for us to actually experiment further with the way in which we build communities, the way in which we create communities, because there is still this um, kind of tension and desire to control, and we have to recognise that the, the, the fear of each other is still still there, and we need mm. to work to overcome it. So to come back to this kind of transition state, how do we, you know, we, we kind of know roughly where we want to be, and we know roughly where we are. Mm. But in order to get to here, we need to enter into this period of transition and experimentation whereby everything is constantly changing. And I don't think it should ever stop changing, but that we create structures that can change easily. Mm -hmm. And this is really at the core of the project. It's a, a framework for building houses. It's a framework for building housing systems. And it's a framework for experimentation. So we can test the new ideas, but we can make them tangible and tangible easily so that people can then come and uh, taste that experience to live in that space and, and also that they have the implicit permission to be able to change that space to better suit their needs and to, uh, to copy it. I think it's beautiful because it's a manifestation of that uh, creation logic where it's actually experimental, iterative, um, it's not a linear straight path, but mm -hmm. it's an exploration of opportunities um, rather than the maybe in management more dominant uh, prediction logic where you know where you are because you have your data and your analysis and you know exactly where you're going and you're trying to aim for that straight shot. Um, and reality, just like in the garden, <laughs> is more natural, it's organic, it's, it takes its own path. and. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a challenge and it's an opportunity at the same time um, because the challenge is that we have to be able to live with that uncertainty and navigate through that change um, and I think that's where um, our conscious really comes in when we have a, a strong purpose or a clear purpose and that is not to be confused with a clear goal but a mm. purpose which has maybe different goals in it um, which is a driver for an um, individual and also a collective group or community or company or organizational state mm -hmm. where it's, um, it helps you to stay on path even though you might not see the path directly but you have this inner certainty of okay this is our purpose. I was mm. just wondering because you're also applying holacracy at the moment at your organization what are your experiences? Mm -hmm. And um, So out of the open space format in Neukölln, which was called Decollective, which was an NGO, organized as an NGO, and a more of a network, a community, where everybody was doing uh, different things, sometimes together, sometimes totally isolated. Uh, we started a company <clears throat> which allowed us to accelerate um, change outside and mostly in bigger companies and organizations, and uh, to package it in different ways. Um, and it also allowed us to become financially sustainable and independent. Um, so we faced a few challenges. Um, the one thing was ownership from the start, which uh, we decided at the very beginning of running the company, which was called Better Today, that all the money we make goes into one pot and then we decide what we do with it, how we distribute it amongst each other, among ourselves and what else we can do with it. That was the, the one thing that guided us for a long time. But nowadays we are over 20 people working full time 
um, it wasn't that easy anymore. And um, one challenge was a lot of communication between all the different individuals because we were naturally consensus driven and harmony mm. <laughs> driven. We always wanted to know everything, but that actually meant a lot of communication and meetings and uh, time that you needed to actually find out what's relevant for you and what's not relevant for you. Mm. So then the other part was decision making based on, um, on, on knowledge, on experience. So how do you do that? And then the third maybe maybe there are more, is um, how do I develop myself further and how do I continuously um, actually make my own dreams become reality or how do we make our shared dreams become reality, mm -hmm. our ideas that, that we have for the future. And so we um, changed our internal organizational model away from a consensus where everybody needs to know everything and can make decisions together to a more team-based organization where we have autonomous teams um, that share information transparent, uh, in a transparent way so you can get the access to the information but you don't have to get it. Um, there's a system that supports us so they were using mm -hmm. a lot of technology um, to share data, to share um, all the information and also um, a, a set of rituals that help us to cultivate that new type of organization um, that is from yeah that is that hasn't been there before what time we haven't it? we haven't dis discovered before um, well we we of course we got inspired by other organizational mm -hmm. models like from software development for example scrum you have a, a, a daily stand-up where you share what's what's going on where your challenges and where you're heading um, to a, a team planning session where you look at the next two uh, two weeks at a, at a sprint level mm -hmm. and plan all the tasks that you see with leaving enough space for unforeseen happenings, but you make it a little bit more clear of what's coming. Um, and the, <clears throat> the one thing that is really important, or became really important for us, was that we can make decisions autonomously in teams of three to five people. Um, and that actually helps us to grow in number because we have many teams now that kind of split like cells and become their autonomous cells mm -hmm. and um, are running on the same DNA with a shared purpose which is actually to empower people to create, to mm -hmm. become creators. This is really what I like about this holacracy uh, uh, organization structure because it's really like working like an organism. It's um, yeah, but it's interesting how you're applying it at the moment. Yeah. We are still There's in an exploration phase, yeah. so we made a prototype and we gave ourselves three months to um, experience that, yeah. to consciously um, see what works, what doesn't work, and also to... We went out and talked to a lot of people like Lalu and others who already maybe are a few steps further in yeah. reinventing their own organization or other organizations, and we take the parts that seem uh, usable for us and seem natural for us mm -hmm. and try them out and then we'll see. Yeah, I think my, one of my favorite uh, structures is, um, well, my favorite sayings about structures is from the Valve Handbook, which is structure happens, but it shouldn't uh, be permanent. So, because it makes it easier for you to accept something also if you recognize it as temporary, but it also is, it, it gets us into the habit of accepting um, change as, as a norm, because it mm -hmm. is a norm. And if, as soon as the structure becomes fixed, then it starts to restrict our own growth once again. So mm -hmm. to always be in a situation that, you know, structures are useful, they, they, they can be useful. But we, we shouldn't hold on to them too tightly. We should also um, constantly evaluate whether they help us to achieve the goal that we're looking to get to or whether there's something that we should now let go of or to put to one side and it's something that we can pick up as a tool um, to help us achieve our objective. Mm -hmm. But that, that rather than seeing organisations and organisational models as kind of permanent things to see them as resources that we can use to achieve our goals and objectives mm -hmm. but always to keep them in mind against our goals and objectives because I think a lot of the problems that we have as a society is we 
we build an organization or a structure to achieve a certain thing mm -hmm. and then we get emotionally attached to the structure and we focus more attention on maintaining the structure and the model than we do on actually achieving the goal. Yeah, and you see it with yeah. NGOs or, or businesses or many organizations set up to achieve a purpose. But if they actually achieved the purpose, then the organization would have to... Um, it would, it would, well, yeah. it, would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be needed. It would, yeah. it would die. And then everybody's role within the organization then becomes connected to this also like if I have a certain role or a certain job I have no incentive to kill that that role that structure because that's bringing in the money that's sustaining my existence and the the, the way in which we relate to our organizational structures and every structure is more about the preservation of the structure rather than the achievement of the goal so we need to kind of take a very loose approach I think to organizations as a whole that we see them as, you know, like this metaphor of the vehicle, you know, but it, it is a vehicle and sometimes you just want to park it to one side and, um, you know, sometimes it's better to explore on foot or to, um, you know, that th there's be... different ways to approach a problem and to yeah. reach a goal and you need to disconnect <laughs> yourself from, um, from the organisational identity, from the structural identity, that these are things that we use um, but we should take care that they don't use us for their own continuation. Yeah, I agree. You call it a loose organizational structure. I might suggest evolutionary organizational structure, mm -hmm. meaning that it's a conscious, um, mm -hmm. continuous um, experiment, actually, um, based on maybe three pillars that uh, help guide the way, the purpose that is shared among the whole staff or the whole team. Or maybe even given from mm. from the founding team, and people can relate to it and want to mm. contribute to it. Um, and the second part, which we haven't touched yet, is an, a certain ethos. So, what are your your ethics? What are your your rules that kind of like are like guidelines that help you make decisions and navigate, um, make it easy, make it clear for everyone that um, certain things are within our range of possibilities and certain things aren't because we decided we don't want to get involved in that. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a third thing is a shared system that is also evolutionary. Uh, so we're using certain tools, we apply them, we test them, evaluate them, and either we continue using them or we throw them away and use another one mm -hmm. until one day we maybe combine things and create our own systems. But at this point, we're not even Uh, close to that we just use what's out there we're using all the open source and google and slack and all the other tools that are in the world already uh, really accessible yeah i think it's the perfect mix of, of chaos and order you have to establish probably to stay dynamic and still build something up because in a way you need also order then i was yeah I was I was just I was just wondering you know because at this POC camp because POC this camp was just lasting for five weeks in the end so it was designed to be temporary and I think I I was I often you know thought about what would happen if it would take one day longer or if there would be the message you know this is a permanent space I think things would definitely work out differently mm. on you know uh, and. And this is always very fascinating. Um, uh, I, I wish, you know, that more people have this experience, you know, like, like you just described, you know, to, to stay, is being in this earth ship, you know, in the mountains, or also me being in this camp, because it's so, it's so incredible, you know. Also, you know, you with Paloma 5 the first time, I think, you know, being in there, it suddenly, you know, triggers something. And, and you learn a lot about humanity, what, how things Or you know, what should be the new normal maybe, mm -hmm. but what is definitely still a huge challenge, and I think you know this organization thing is still a huge challenge because there lies a lot in there. You know how we are um, uh, see ourselves, see our uh, uh, the others around us, uh, how we are uh, evaluate or see nature in the end. Uh, uh, are we separate? Are we union and uh, and this everything is just you know reflected in all the media you're surrounding uh, mm -hmm. yeah us with in the end 
and and also how we organize each other and uh, yeah I think that's the that, that, that's I don't know for me the question is, like I I don't think we should organize each other um, Get to the fuck out of the way, you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, but it's it it, it 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 it's very hard for us to get to that stage because uh, we're the way in which we see the world is so shaped by our history and our experience and our understanding of what 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 humans are yeah. and 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 how we are and the, the the dominant narrative is you know that humans are you know shitty awful. Um, People as a, as a as a species, and we're we we pretty we pretty much see ourselves as monsters. I think. Um, I mean, that may be an exaggeration. I don't I don't feel that way. But sometimes when you talk to people, um, I once told a girl that I believed in peace, and um, and she was a religious girl, and she said, "How can you believe in that nonsense?" And <laughs> and I, I I was really in this situation. Where I was like, "Wow, I've 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 found my faith." Yeah, because now I can relate to somebody else that has faith. Right. Um, but there, there is this kind of, you know, narrative, very strong narrative, mm. that, that that people are bad, and and that yeah. some people don't even want to engage in the idea that there could be something different because this is how things are, and therefore <coughs> we need to we need to control people and we need to manage people because we're out to get one another otherwise, and this very much comes from. The kind of dominant paradigm of um, of fear, but it also comes from connecting um, humans to our behaviors, mm -hmm. and our behaviors are more something which is shaped by our ecosystems and our environments. If we if we grow up in a, a violent society, um, if we're beaten or abused as, uh, as 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 children, then that affects what is available to us as a normal behavior that is the most readily available thing um, that, that, it, that it, it's, it's there you know yeah. it, it, it exists as a, as a behavior set um, likewise we can only really act within the, the boundaries of our own physical ecosystem you know if there isn't a, a bio shop or there isn't a way to do good or we don't have the financial resource to do good mm -hmm. or we can't engage in it we still have these other dominant needs. We have to feed ourselves. We have to provide security for ourselves. We have to do all of these things. So all of these different ecosystems are affecting our behavior, which is constantly changing, mm -hmm. constantly uh, transient and constantly morphing. And um, so at one moment I might be hungry, and that's going to affect whether I'm able to listen to you because hunger becomes dominant. Mm -hmm. And then I might become an arsehole, you know, I become mm -hmm. angry. And that's, a, that's, that's yeah. just a very simple example. But there, there, there are so many um, varying factors in these dominant ecosystems that affect how we are to one another. But we have to disconnect the behavior from, from the human because that's a circumstantial right. um, thing. So it's the, the human being and the, the, the present point and how do we create ecosystems which are nurturing, that make better behaviours available, that give us alternatives of um, means of engaging with one another, that make the resources that we need available to make the world better for ourselves and others available, and also that the dominant um, kind of emotional driver isn't fear but instead that we're coming from a place of love so that when we are even confronted with other humans behaving badly, mm -hmm. our response isn't bad monkey, need to lock them up, but yeah. instead, what is it that is, you know, what is, your, um, what is your pain? What is your fear? What is it that's been made available to you that's the dominant force in your life that causes you to behave mm -hmm. in that way? And then look at how to make something different available, that you can actually create the the opportunity for a better human being, for growing humanity in their being, and in the way in which they engage with one another and the rest of the world. Mm. And um, I think there's that there's a lot of possibility and a lot of opportunity in that, but we need to first detach ourselves from the the idea in the first place that. One, we are what we do, um, and uh, even that this stops here. Yeah. You know, my lungs, they, they're, they're just one part of the, the, the cycle. 
um, you know, that gets the oxygen to my body, those trees produce the oxygen. Yeah. So if you remove those trees, you kill me. It's, um, or you remove the plants, you remove the oxygen, you remove the planet, you kill me. My, my, my being does not stop at my skin. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in here, I'm a composition of millions and billions of organisms and a flow of nutrients that's constantly changing. And I also think you know, that this kind of separation we are, we are experiencing today Is, is it starts everything you know with this philosophy that this body ends here you mm. know with the outer skin uh, and this kind of you know became a predominant philosophy and it established itself in the system we are experiencing today and but you know by by seeing this living coming coming to a kind of you know it's it's get, get challenged in a big thing um, and I think it's also because that people understand more and more that of course you're not separate and of course there is a kind of you know a common understanding and that there is uh, first of all of course we need each other but also you know how we we see nature and uh, and how we are uh, is nature uh, uh, you know dangerous or is it mother nature or um, so it's it's um, it's this philosophy which is lying mm. beneath in the end Yeah. We have touched also a lot on the organizational structure and the maybe physical structure and now yeah. we're talking about the, um, uh, let's say, social dynamics that help us to set up and sustain an ecosystem for development, right? Because right. if we look into what we've done or the things that we know out there, um, I think three or well, many things come up, but one is really this trust and And knowing that I'm in a safe space or in a safe environment and we can build that and we also have to protect that space. Uh, the other one is the openness and the curiosity to learn from each other mm -hmm. in order to be inspired and to inspire others. Because yeah. then we can broaden our spectrum, look at other solutions and um, other ways of being, other states of being. Um, and Jay already Put it into words it's really love that unites us and shows us that we are one there yeah. are no boundaries yeah, and this should be the driving force in the end not fear yeah, to become I, i think my personal goal at least and i can only ever say and speak for myself <coughs> as far as myself is any anything less than that I think more than a construct, but um, to to have an open heart, an open mind, and open hands. Yeah. So that everything is um, nothing is held on too tightly, mm -hmm. and that everything is about um, flowing from a, a, a place of um, compassion and, and, and love and, mm -hmm. and positivity, but that everything else is a is, is, is a is a tool to. To grow the world and to mm. to allow it to yeah. to flow free me that everything is something I can pick up and use and have access to, but it doesn't belong to me. I don't even hold it on right. to that degree to the, the tightness of ownership. That it's instead it's um, I can let go of everything and uh, and and just flow towards mm. the future. Yeah, I would also I would I think you know wish for more. Uh, for a real sustainable lifestyle, like which is in the end, you know, in balance, mm -hmm. uh, socially, economically, ecologically. Also, you know, I w wish you know for more solidarity in the system with e with each other, and also you know, and also this point which you say is openness. I would also say you know, I would translate it into sharing in the end, and uh, which is I think in the end the same. It's just mm -hmm. self uh, from another perspective. Uh, because I also I more and more recognize you know I'm I'm so not the person who wants to own stuff if it is a car or whatever it's uh, I so loved it in this camp it was just perfect mm -hmm. <laughs> having all these great people around working together and having you know a goal together it's the best thing that can happen to you and yeah yeah All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we already are. We yeah. just keep on, keep on doing it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think the, there's, there's, there's not a lot of principles at play like 
yeah, do something, do something from a from a good position with a with a good heart. Let go of it, let it grow, right. share it. Yeah. And um, and everybody else that's doing something that relates to what you're doing will find you, and together we'll make it happen. But don't worry too much about how it's going to happen. Just start building it. Trust. And it, trust, trust the process. And adapt. Trust the process. <laughs> and get out of the It will all be gravy. We <laughs> are the world. <laughs> we are the children. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I think somebody needs the toilet. <laughs> Cut. <laughs>